Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in to my channel where I talk about stocks, the stock market and investing. I post videos daily so if this sounds like something you want to get more of please subscribe down below. Okay in today's video I'm going to talk about a terrible trend that Roku is facing and investors should look out for. Now if you weren't aware Roku is one of Kathy Wood's favorite stocks in her ARK Innovation ETF portfolio. Kathy Wood is a popular asset manager, portfolio manager, and her investment decisions have carry a lot of sway with everyday investors. Uh, the stock I'll be talking about today, Roku, is her third top holding in her portfolio as of September 8, 2022. Kathy Wood owns $552 million worth of Roku stock and it's slightly behind her holdings in Zoom video communications and Tesla, the electric vehicle company run by Elon Musk. And so Roku, Kathy Wood sees something really exciting in Roku and it, it, she must be hopeful in its prospects in order for it to be a top three holding in her portfolio. So let's get right into the trend that I think is a troubling one for investors in Roku. So um, if you're not familiar with Roku, it operates the it operates these players that connect to your TVs which connect them to its platform where you can stream services you could stream content like Netflix YouTube Disney Plus etc Roku also licenses its platform to TV manufacturers so that Roku is the default operating system on those TVs and so Roku reports its business it 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 segregates its business into two segments the platform segment and its player segment so the players are those little units that connect to the TVs and those are crucial for Roku because that's how it acquires customers when a customer buys that player device it connects it to the TV and they sign up with Roku and now all purchases that individuals make through the Roku platform Roku gets to take a percentage of those sales and additionally all revenue that's generated from users watching from the Roku platform Roku gets to get a percentage of those sales so Roku relies on selling those units and partnering with TV manufacturers to gain account growth so as you might imagine Roku thrived during the pandemic when billions of people were spending more time at home and so demand for in-home entertainment soared and we were watching more TV we were buying more TVs buying more of the players and Roku thrived and now the reverse is true we're spending less time at home going out more often watching less things on TV and so that's hurting Roku's business additionally another trend that's hurting Roku's business and it's actually how Roku starts off its shareholder letter that was posted on July 28. Uh, Roku says, in the second quarter, there was a significant slowdown in TV advertising spend due to macroeconomic environment, which pressured platform revenue growth. So that's where Roku relies on advertising revenue from businesses you can imagine businesses selling cars selling travel selling consumer packaged goods and businesses are facing headwinds of their own such as supply chain shortages and you might imagine that if you've got if you're barely stocking the shelf enough to meet customer demand organic customer demand there's little reason to advertise why would you need to advertise if you're already selling out of your product and so there's less reason to advertise if you're in that in that in that case. And then additionally, the uncertainty with regard to the Russian invasion of Ukraine is giving advertisers in Europe a bit of hesitation because they don't know how consumers are going to respond over the next three, six, nine, twelve months. And so they're pulling back advertising as well. 
Roku says they expect these challenges to continue in the near term as economic concerns pressure markets worldwide. Okay, we scroll down further and we notice that Roku's active accounts has been steadily increasing and they've sustained that growth impressively. Even through these headwinds, they've been able to sustain that growth, so that's solid. But this, this active account growth is coming at a cost and this is the trend that I highlight as a troubling one that investors should look out for. And it's down here where Roku discusses their player gross profit or loss. So they're, they're generating a gross profit loss from sales of their player units. This was 6.7 million in the second quarter of 2021, rising to 14.6 million to 45.9 million in the fourth quarter of 2021, which is the highest, typically the highest sales quarter, and then falling 15.1 million and then rising again to 22 million in its most recently completed quarter. When we compare the second quarter of 2022 with the second quarter of 2021, we notice that the gross profit loss nearly tripled from the same quarter the year prior. And so if that trend continues in the next quarter, you can expect losses between 45 to 50 million in that gross pro uh, in that player segment. So you you're all probably aware of the widespread inflation that's inflicting economies worldwide prices of nearly everything is going up and that's been no different for Roku. Roku has experienced rising costs for the inputs that go into these players but Roku's management has taken a different strategy than most other businesses out there. Most other businesses you've noticed have passed along price increases to customers. They're increasing prices for the products that they sell because they're experiencing higher costs for their inputs. Ma Roku's management has not done that. They've said, you know what? We'll absorb these higher costs and we'll keep the prices the same for customers. That way customers don't have to pay higher prices for our player units and that way it will encourage more sales of these player units. Which we saw earlier that it is working. So there, it's having the desired effect because active accounts continues to grow but that's coming at the cost of that decision to absorb the higher higher expenses, not pass them along to consumers. Okay, Roku is willing to do that because of how profitable their platform segment is. If we look right above their player segment, their platform gross profit has increased in profitability over the past several quarters. However, the second quarter, of it's the increase is starting to diminish, so it's decelerating the growth. In the most recent quarter, the platform segment generated a gross profit of $377 million. So Roku's willing to absorb a loss of $22 million in the, in the player segment to gain that gross, the platform gross profit of $377 million. Okay, so they're willing to do that. That said, Overall gross profit, so total gross profit in, in its most recent quarter still increased 5%, even though the pl player segment the decreased, their overall gross profit increased. But for the, for the next quarter, for the upcoming third quarter, management is forecasting a total gross profit of $325 million. So $325 million total gross profit for Q3 2022. When we compare that with Q3 2021, total gross profit, we come down here, 363.9 million. 363.9 compared with 325 million. We notice the next quarter, Roku is expecting total gross profit to fall, which is going to be the first time that's happened in recent quarters. And that's like to, likely due to the twin forces of decreasing advertising demand I mentioned up up earlier up here and also the con the mounting losses from the player gross pro gross margin from absorbing those higher costs and keeping customers insulated so this is a troubling trend that investors in Roku should look out for now that said is this is likely a short term issue Roku's long term prospects are excellent 
Millions of people are canceling traditional cable and satellite connection and switching to streaming instead, and that's giving Roku a long-term tailwind. So they should be okay longer term, but this issue in the short term has cost them five consecutive quarters of a negative gross profit in the player segment. This wasn't the case in 2020. They were generating positive gross profits in this segment in 2020. So it turned negative in, in the second quarter of 2021, and it's it's remained persistent. So this is just something, it's not something investors should panic and sell the stock over, but it's just something to keep an eye out for to see the magnitude of these losses and hopefully watch out for a turnaround in this trend. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Comment down below, and if you liked it, please subscribe to get more content like this. See you again next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beat the market by more than 250%. Go to fool.com slash parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.